Today I'm going to extract pure elemental iodine from a betadine antiseptic solution. Betadine is a complex between iodine and povidone or PVP and you can pick it up at pretty much any pharmacy or Walmart. To extract my iodine, the first thing I want to do is add a concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide. This is going to break the bond between iodine and povidone and produce sodium iodide, which is colorless and soluble in water. When the solution is clear like this, it means that all of the iodine has broken away from the povidone, but I want to continue adding hydroxide until the solution becomes cloudy in order to precipitate the povidone itself for full separation. Now you'll notice that the solution I have here is yellow, while sodium iodide is colorless. And the reason for that is that at room temperature, iodine is not able to fully react with sodium hydroxide, and some of it stays suspended in solution. Fixing this though is pretty simple. All I do is put it on the hot plate for a while, let it cool, and once it's cooled, I notice that a lot of the povidone has settled out of solution. And to get rid of it, I simply decant off my sodium iodide. From here on out, all I'm going to do is continue boiling down my solution until I reach a final volume of between 100 and 200 milliliters. The more the volume is reduced, the more povidone begins to precipitate out of solution, and I get rid of it every time by simple gravity filtration. Once I finally reach my target volume, I pour my solution off into a 500 milliliter beaker. To this I'm going to add hydrochloric acid, which will neutralize all of my excess sodium hydroxide. It'll also react with the sodium iodide to form sodium chloride and elemental iodine. This reaction is highly exothermic and will release a lot of heat and potentially some foam, so make sure you do it in small amounts. Once that's cooled down a bit, I add a good bit of 3% hydrogen peroxide to oxidize all the remaining sodium iodide to elemental iodine. This is allowed to sit for a few hours to allow all of the iodine to settle to the bottom. Now at this point there's a lot of ways to get my iodine out, but I find the best to be vacuum filtration. This not only is fast, but it also allows me to pull a vacuum on the iodine and get it as dry as possible before the final purification step. Now to purify my highly impure iodine, I need to scrape it out of my filter and get it into a beaker. Now you'll notice that my iodine in the filter was pretty resinous, and that's because of some povidone left over, which I'm going to purify away now using evaporation. Elemental iodine boils at 184 degrees Celsius, and by heating it to that temperature, I can evaporate it, and it will recrystallize on the sides of my beaker. This step does need to be done under a fume hood because iodine gas, while beautiful, is fairly toxic. Once the sides of my beaker are pretty thoroughly covered in iodine crystals, I cut the heat, remove the beaker, and allow it to cool until no more iodine gas is visible. At this point, I use a spatula to scrape all of the crystals off of the bottom of this flask that I placed on top of the beaker, as well as the sides of the flask itself. I don't want to scrape any of the crystals off of the bottom, as those are still pretty contaminated with povidone. After doing this process twice, I'm left with 1.68 grams of pure elemental iodine, which represents a 71% yield. I think this yield is pretty good for the process, but in general, you're better off just buying iodine if you're able to. This process was pretty expensive and lengthy, and I really only did it for fun. One fun little thing I'd like to show you guys for staying with me until the end is how iodine can react directly with metals in the presence of water to form uh, metal iodides. This is a highly exothermic reaction that's very similar to thermite, and the heat it produces will actually burn off some of the elemental iodine left over. That said, I wouldn't recommend doing this reaction at scale, but with such a tiny amount, it's not too dangerous. And that's the entire process. I hope you found this video interesting, and if you liked it and want to see more like it, uh, consider following for more.